Okay, now let's take a look at some uh, most strongly supported questions. Not the hybrid kind, not the kind where you're filling in the blank with some conclusion, but really they, uh, in the most strongly supported proper question, in the stimulus, you're given a set of claims, right? And then you have some answer choices. And let's say A is the right answer choice. Then the relationship between the stimulus and the correct answer choice is that of support. We already saw this when we did the hybrid main conclusion slash most strongly supported. But with that type of hybrid question, everything in the stimulus was utilized to arrive at some kind of conclusion. Sure, you may see that in proper MSS as well. That is one subtype of most strongly supported question where all the information gets utilized, driving towards supporting the right answer choice. That's one subtype. There's another subtype. And the other subtype is one where they just kind of ignore, say, like the first two lines of text, and they ignore the last sentence of the stimulus, and they focus just in the middle part, and that's the part that gets used to support the correct answer choice. And this, this is just superfluous, irrelevant information, so is this just superfluous, distracting information. That happens. Okay, there are MSS questions where only a subset of the information given to the stimulus becomes relevant to support the correct answer choice. The rest of it is just pure distraction. Okay, that's the first point I want to make about um, now that we're moving into MSS, there are two different types of it. Uh, the next theoretical point I want to make is uh, about this idea of support. You know, we kind of, we've been playing around with this in the main conclusion questions. You had to identify the claim that's being supported in the hybrid MCMSS that we did right before. Uh, this lesson, we're having to supply the answer choice that receives support. It already started hinting at this idea that you can understand what it means to support on a spectrum. Okay, so let me just uh, perhaps illustrate the spectrum with an example. Let's say that uh, we're looking at a stimulus where the speaker is identified. Her name is Sumi, and Sumi has the following things to say. My cats provide me with emotional support. They're very nice to cuddle with. They're my friends. Okay, so this is the stimulus, and in lieu of the answers, I'm actually just gonna put a, put a placeholder for the answers because you'll see why soon. I wanna vary the kind of answers that we can have. The point here is, you know, I said I want to illustrate what, it, what does it mean to support. Well, I just, first I want you to know that support is just one kind of relationship that the answer choices can stand in relation to the stimulus, okay? It's not the only kind. There are other kinds of relationships. It's very helpful to be able to situate on the spectrum, on the continuum of all the possible relationships that an answer choice can have with the stimulus, situate where support falls on that continuum, okay? So let's go ahead and map out this continuum from one end to the other end, we'll define the extremes first. This end, I just want you to think of this end as copy-paste. Okay, I, I say explicitly stated, right? Explicitly stated, ES for short, but just think of it as copy-paste. You know, you, you could say something like, cats are my friends. All right, so there, you know, okay, I change, it's not exactly copy-paste, I use, I fill in the referent, the they, referencing cats, I fill that in, fair enough, right? So, okay, fine, but you, you can see this is, this is one kind of relationship. If you take cats are my friends, you pop it in over here, and then I ask you, what relationship does this claim stand with respect to the stimulus? Well, you say it's explicitly stated. All right, now on the other end of the spectrum, you have what's called a contradiction. So that would be something like cats are not my friends. And you take this claim, you pop it in over here, and I ask you, hey, uh, this claim over here, what relation does it stand in with respect to the stimulus? You would say, oh, that's contradiction. It's just, you can see it's just contradicting a piece of the stimulus. In the stimulus, Sumi says cats are my friends. Here you're saying cats are not my friends. Simple contradiction. It doesn't have to be last claim. You, you could have said something like cats um, are, cats do not provide me with emotional support. That would be a contradiction as well. Okay, so now that hopefully is pretty clear. What gets kind of confusing is, is all the space in between, right? So right in the middle, I want to introduce this idea of consistent with. Now, this is not to be confused with supported by because it's not. Right. Th this is just merely consistent with. Now, if I say something like, Sumi enjoys hiking, hopefully you can see that, I mean, the, the claim that Sumi enjoys hiking, let's pop it in over here as an answer choice. What kind of relationship does it stand in with respect to the stimulus? The answer is just a mere, it's, I mean, it's merely consistent. It doesn't contradict anything in the stimulus. 
Not just three claims. My cats provide me emotional support. Cats are nice to cuddle with. They're my friends. Do you see how they have nothing to do with whether Sumi enjoys hiking? There's just absolutely no support going this way at all. Crucially, though, there's also no anti-support, meaning the fact that these claims are true doesn't toggle my intuitions on whether this is true one way or the other, meaning the fact that this is true doesn't make me think that she enjoys hiking. It also doesn't make me think that she doesn't enjoy hiking, right? That's what it means to be just merely consistent with. It's not a support relationship. The support relationship lives over here on this end of the spectrum. Okay, so the MSS questions, their answers, you know, we're, we're, we're talking theory for MSS, most strongly supported. Their, the correct answer will be on this end of the spectrum. The incorrect answer will be over here on this end of the spectrum. Okay, so by and large, that's true. Now, there may be uh, very few rare exceptions, but let's, get, let's dig into the details more before I speak to those exceptions. Now, to do a more fine-grained analysis of this part of the spectrum, in other words, let's zoom in. Right? Like, I'm sure I can put tick marks here and, you know, put uh, other, other claims. Like, for example, must be true, right? For example, strongly implied, for example, um, hints at, right? Hints at, or if you don't like hints at, you could think of like merely suggests. Not strongly implied, but just merely suggests, right? These are different gradations of support. You can see how it kind of moves this way, right? Like as you move further along the continuum, you get less and less and less support until you hit over here just merely consistent with no support at all, right? So let's flesh out these three tick marks along the continuum with some examples, starting with what must be true. Now, I want to distinguish must be true from explicitly stated. You could say, well, cats are my friends must be true, and you'd be right. But then it, it also is explicitly stated. So that doesn't help to kind of, you know, distinguish these two positions, right? So here, here's a statement that must be true. Sumi has non-human friends. You see how this claim, if we popped it in over here, Sumi has non-human friends, it's not stated, right? She never said, I have non-human friends. But it is a must-be-true inference. It's a logically valid inference. Those are just different ways of saying the same thing, right? Because she says, they're my friends. Well, then if cats are your friends, then it must be true that you have non-human friends, okay? So now, what about strongly implied? Well, see, again, we, I want to try to distinguish this from this, right? You have to say something that, you know, perhaps could be false in some fringe world, but is likely true. And this, this gets difficult, right? I, I, we're about to do some most strongly supported questions. The uh, next lesson will be a must be true questions. And it gets very difficult to distinguish between the two because I, I think perhaps I drew the tick marks a bit too far. Maybe they're actually, maybe in reality, they're a lot closer to each other, All right? So here I'm going to say something like Sumi enjoys spending time with her cats, right? You take this claim, you pop it in over here, I ask you, what's the relationship between this claim and the stimulus? Now you get to something that's strongly implied. Again, it's not explicitly to say, she never said, she, she said, my cats provide me emotional support. They're very nice to cuddle with. They're my friends. None of which is she enjoys spending time with her cats. Right? But you see the claim that she enjoys spending time with her cats is strongly implied. Must it be true? I mean, it gets kind of hard to argue how this could be false, but I hope you also see that there is a little bit of space. I mean, this claim that she has non-human friends is just so much more strongly supported, right? All you have to do is look here. She says she has cat friends. You know cats are not humans, so therefore she has non-human friends. Here, you know, maybe you can get into some argument about like, oh, but what does it really mean to enjoy spending time? Right, and how much time are we talking about? And I mean, I don't know. It's kind of hard, but for sake of illustration, hopefully, you understand there's a there is a bit of a difference between this and this. So now for this last position on this continuum, I'm gonna say something like Sumi is nice to her cats. You see, this position is harder to support. I don't think it's incredibly difficult to support, but what I am saying is, compared to this claim, compared to this claim, compared to this claim, this is harder to support. Again, let's evaluate what she said. My cats provide me emotional support. Okay. They're very nice to cuddle with. Okay. This is from your perspective, right? The cats give you emotional support. You enjoy cuddling with the cats. The cats, you call your cats friends. Does that mean you're nice to your cats? Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it kind of suggests that she's nice with her friends. And if, listen, if we know nothing else about the world, we know nothing else about Sumi, this is the only information we have. And I had to bet everything I own on whether she's nice to her cats or not. 
and you're forcing me to make a bet, well then yeah, I will bet that she's nice to her cats because this is I have some evidence that she's nice to her cats. I have zero evidence that she's not. So fine, I'll make that bet, right? I'll bet that she's nice to her cats. But you see how, the, I mean, the confidence with which I would make that bet is not great. I would much prefer to bet on this. I would even more prefer to bet on this, and I would definitely prefer to bet on this. Do you see? What, like that's what I mean when I say it. Just the it gets weaker as he, the support gets weaker. I can see, you know, cats provide emotional support. Maybe you abuse things that provide you with emotional support. I mean, some people do that, right? They're very nice to cuddle with. Again, maybe you're not nice to things that you enjoy cuddling with. Again, I, I mean, that's a real psychological phenomenon. People do that, right? And, and people are mean to their friends. So, do you see what I mean? Like, th that's why it's it's weaker. It's merely suggested. And then, of course, we get to this claim over here, which is, I mean, you can see there's no no relationship, right? Just merely consistent with it. What about this end of the spectrum? I mean, surely there's some daylight between straight-up contradiction and merely consistent with, right? Yeah, and the answer is yes. And you, you can, I mean, I don't know the words in English to, like, symmetrically mirror these stations along the spectrum on the negative end, but I'll just kind of, in a coarse-grained way, capture all of this as something called anti-support. Okay, so I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to call it anti-support. And I'll, I'll illustrate with an example of what anti-support looks like. Sumi thinks that cats suck. Right? You see, if, if this were the claim that you popped in here, I would say that, yeah, it's, it's just going against the information provided in the stimulus. She clearly said cats are providing this benefit, providing this other benefit. Here's how she feels about them. To say that cats suck is not just, I mean, it's not consistent, right? The crucial difference is that anti-support is different from consistent with. It's not consistent with the claims. You have information in here to strongly imply that she doesn't think cats suck, right? So that's the position that I'm going to call anti-support. Okay, so now we've mapped out a lot of stations along the way on this spectrum. We're mostly going to focus over here for most strongly supported because the vast majority of answers, you know, I said they reside over here earlier, but truly this is not enough, okay? It has to be pretty strong, right? Which means you're looking for answers that fall anywhere in this range, okay? In this range. Now, as a preview of the must-be-true lesson, you're looking for answers and must-be-trues that fall in on a narrower range, right? Must-be-true is even more strict of a standard. So, okay, most strongly supported, right? Over here. And like I said, most of the wrong answers will be over here. But every once in a while, they do give you a wrong answer that sits like over here. When they do that, though, the crucial point is that the right answer sits on this end of the spectrum in relation to the wrong answer. It's more strongly supported than the wrong answer. Okay, so with that theoretical framework in mind, with this continuum, with this spectrum in mind, and with the first point I made about MSS way in the beginning of this lesson, which you probably forgot already, uh, there are two types of MSS, right? One type that utilizes all the information to support the correct answer choice, and another type that merely picks up on like two lines of text and uses those two lines to support the answer. Right? With all that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at our first MSS question. 